Yesterday, I was at a concelebrated a funeral of a young man I had never met in my life, but he was the brother of one of our priests in the archdiocese, the brother of Father Danny Badel. The young man who passed away, was, his name was David. And one of the great things about being a priest in our diocese is that not just when priests pass away, but when family members of priests pass away, we all try and get to each other's families' funerals. But this was a particularly tragic one, as David was 25 years old, uh, somewhat recently married, and at 22, he was diagnosed with cancer. And he had a three-year battle uh, that ended on Christmas Eve of this past year. And we buried him uh, yesterday morning. And as I said, I didn't know David, um, but I came to find out a lot of amazing things about David as his brother, Father Danny Badel, had the burden of presiding, celebrating, and preaching uh, the mass of his, the funeral mass of his brother. And he had mentioned many great things about his brother, how he was a faithful Catholic. He taught Sunday morning religious education in his parish. He was a hard worker. Uh, he was a wonderful husband, loved being married to his wife, and his wife, I am sure, loved being married to him. He was a good son. But one of the things that stuck out was David didn't waste anything from what Father Danny said. David never wasted anything. And in the last three years of his life, he so much didn't waste anything that he didn't waste even the suffering that he had to go through. The three years long battle of physical pain that comes with cancer and its treatments, the, the immense psychological, spiritual, and emotional pain that comes with trying various treatments and every single time being told it didn't help, the suffering that ensues of watching your parents suffer through this, watching your siblings suffer through this with you, watching your wife suffer through you with this, watching your extended family and friends suffer through you with this. And David never wasted, Father Danny said, David never wasted that suffering. He always offered it up to our Lord on his cross in prayer and uniting it to him in that moment. And as I said, that battle ended on New Year's Eve. And I'm certain many people asked after his passing, you know, what good? What good could really come from any of that? Of a 25-year-old, before his married life really had even started, they hadn't had children yet. What good can come from this? From losing a man at such a young age, what good can come from the three years long suffering that he went through and he and his family went through. One of the most difficult things of our belief system as Catholics is the belief in redemptive suffering. The belief that we hold dear, that suffering has been transformed and good comes of it. And it begins to be revealed to us in our gospel today on this feast of the Holy Family. When Mary and Joseph bring the child Jesus to the temple and present him to the Lord, they run into the prophet Simeon. And Simeon says to Mary, this child is destined for the rise and fall of many in Israel, and he will be a sign that will be contradicted. It will be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, Mary, a sword will pierce. It will be a sign that will be contradicted. And the contradiction in the life and death of God is that the eternal God, who is the author of life, the author of human life himself had to go through a human death. The author of life had to die a human death. That's the contradiction. He had to suffer as humans suffer, and he had to die as humans die. And in that death, 
a sword, a lance, if you will, the lance that pierced the side of our Lord and Savior on his cross, confirming his death went through him, piercing the heart of our Blessed Mother. And as many, too many, know, and many of you can imagine, when you witness the death of a child, your child, if you've had to go through that, your heart is pierced. As mothers and fathers, their hearts are pierced. And it's as if they are dying. And they are going through a death. But this contradiction in the author of life himself dying a human death, in the contradiction of our Blessed Mother's heart being pierced, the consequence is not more death. The consequence is transformative. The consequence is fruitful. That through the heart, the immaculate heart of our Blessed Mother, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace flows out into this world through her suffering heart and through the suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, offering us not further death, but life redemption, and salvation. Can any good ever come from suffering? In particular, from such tragic suffering, especially in the case of David Badel or any young man or woman that dies. Father Danny Badel shared in a homily that that one of their cousins came to the visitation the night before. And she had said how she had fallen away from her faith. She had stopped practicing her Catholic faith for years after high school. And she didn't really believe in God, didn't believe in anything, didn't believe in the power of prayer. But one thing David, the young man that passed away, the one thing David asked when people would ask him, what can we do for you? He would say, just pray the rosary. Please just pray the rosary. And so this cousin did that. Not really believing in God, not believing in our Blessed Mother, not believing in prayer, but as she told Father Badel, she believed in David. She believed in David. And as she began praying the rosary week after week after week for three years, she began to rediscover faith. Through the suffering of her cousin, she began to re-encounter God and the God who transforms suffering. The God who was a sign of contradiction, not just in the fact that the author of life had to suffer and die himself, but that when we go through suffering, as his mother did, our blessed mother, as David did, as his family did, as all of us do, that when we go through suffering, we can offer that in contradiction to what people think and how they see it. That here is an opportunity for redemption. Through our suffering, our Lord works through us by uniting it to his cross and offering the world and those of us around redemption and salvation. It is one of the most difficult beliefs, I think, for us as Christians, redemptive suffering. But it is one of the most glorious beliefs. It is one of the most hopeful beliefs that what we suffer, we no longer have to suffer in vain. We can suffer and transform the world as our Lord did, as our Blessed Mother did, through us grace upon grace upon grace issuing forth through us. As we know today is New Year's Eve and it's supposed to be a fun and joyous day. It is the Christmas season. It is a fun and joyous season. But as we, some of us have the custom on New Year's to offer a New Year's resolution and I might propose one if you don't have one yet. Don't waste 
opportunities of suffering this year. Don't let your suffering go to waste in 2018. Rather, every time you suffer, whether it be by choice or whether it not be your choice, every time you suffer in 2018, offer it to our Lord, who was the sign of contradiction. Offer it through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, whose heart was pierced. Offer it so that the world might be redeemed even more through us, might receive salvation even more through us. Because we are reminded in this Christmas season that while it is joyous, overwhelmingly so, the child born unto us in this season came to suffer, came to die, and came to transform this entire world but be reminded today he came to transform our suffering.